Well, hello, welcome to the webinar. You're in the right place for the fast lane to learning measurement with me, Andrew Downs from Watershed, and Piers Lee, the Chief Learning Strategy Officer for Leo and LTG. Now, if you signed up for this event before April, you're in for a treat because this month we're celebrating five years of XAPI. We've got webinars, we've got practitioner spotlights, loads of resources, and each week you're going to have at least one event which is jam packed with 20 minutes of helpful insight followed by 20 minutes of Q&A as well. Um, please do ask as many questions as you have during this webinar. We won't get to answer all of them during the webinar, but we will follow up with a Q&A document where we answer all of those uh, as we're going. So as today is, is the kickoff event for the series, um, leading up to today, we polled you on Twitter, email, on the website to ask what, was the, what would be the most useful thing for us to cover in these webinars. Um, so we've just launched a poll now. What do you think our top request was? Can you guess? So please uh, respond to that poll now. Great. And uh, yeah, it looks like most of you got the, the right answers there. The top two requests that we had in the poll were real case studies and best practices, which is exactly what you guys have selected, particularly the case studies, which is really exciting because we've got Lots of case studies coming up. Um, so today's webinar, what are we going to cover? Well, we'll start off with, with, with uh, Piers talking us through um, some insights and uh, red flags from a survey that, that we conducted into measuring the business impact of learning. Um, then we're going to dive into Back to Me for a crash course in measuring the impact of learning and sharing some tips and advice to get started. Um, we'll then do an overview of the case studies that we're going to be covering in the rest of the series. So you'll get just a taste today, and then you can come back in the rest of the webinar series and hear the, the full case studies from the people that were actually involved from the companies themselves. Um, and then we'll also share lots and lots of different tools and resources to help you get started with, with that. Um, we'll be sending both the recording and the Q&A document out to you via email after this webinar, um, should be coming tomorrow, the next couple of days. Um, so without further ado, I'll, I'll hand over to Piers to talk to us about what is the state of learning measurement. Over to you, Piers. Thanks very much, Andrew, and, and hello, everybody. Um, about um, two years ago, we really set off to take this whole subject very, very seriously. Um, uh, and, and, and that subject is about how do you measure the business impact of learning and how do you demonstrate that. And I think that um, over the years uh, in the industry, um, and, and, and those of you that have been in it for a long time, you'll all recognize that um, lots of good studies have been done, uh, lots of return on investment studies, um, and all of these have been very valuable. Um, but you will also recognize the sheer amount of effort that has to go into creating those uh, and uh, the issue that uh, lots of people get drowned in the data that, they, uh, that, the, that the process tends to create. And also the issue that uh, once those ROI studies are published, if they're published on a Wednesday, by the following Tuesday, they tend to be out of date. Um, and therefore of limited usefulness. So um, what we're talking about here and that Andrew will pick up on is about uh, a big change and about using big data um, to move from uh, lagging indicators to predictive indicators. But before we set out on anywhere, we really wanted to have a kind of uh, a look into the industry and find out kind of where people were. And I think sometimes uh, it feels a bit like um, this, this, this next image. Um, uh, you know, which is the, the Sisyphus p pushing the boulder uphill. I mean, it really is uh, something that we've all been talking about for a long time, um, but few people have um, have actually been executing on it. And when it comes to being able to describe to leadership um, what the purpose of, of learning and development is, what the business impact of learning and development is, uh, very few people have got answers to that. And that's something that um, we're hoping uh, we would be able to change, um, and, or rather play our part and help change uh, over the next um, few weeks, months, and years. Um, one of the questions that we went out and, and, and then therefore surveyed a, a lot of organizations, and we, we wound up over the last two years reaching about 750 uh, large organizations across um, both Europe and the US. And one of the things that that showed us this year 
uh, is this stat about um, uh, whether or not leaders in L&D feel executive pressure to measure learning's impact. And well, in at the end of 2016, when we, when we took the survey and obviously published it in 2017, only 35% of the people that we surveyed actually felt pressure to measure learning's impact. Um, and when we took that to, again at the end of last year and published at the beginning of this year, that number had gone up to uh, 60%. Um, so 35% to 60% is a pretty pretty major uh, trend. It is something that anecdotally we're seeing across the industry, uh, whereby leadership is taking a great deal of interest in uh, what L&D is doing uh, and the results that it gets from a business impact point of view. Um, and just to quote uh, one phrase that we heard, which is that L&D is the last great unmeasured uh, spend uh, across corporate um, across corporate business and so it's one of those things which actually we need to kind of get ahead on uh, and to uh, provide an answer for and so if we just move on to the next slide uh, the, the the summary of this is you know what we feel is, is that there is growing sea level pressure for this um, that there is an answer to how you approach it which is the big data approach um, and what we're also seeing is the first few L&D leaders actually integrating uh, business impact measurement at the design stage of projects we're seeing that all uh, you know in quite a number of places right now uh, and and the good news is uh, from the survey uh, which was which was about the response from L&D leaders themselves if you just go on to the next slide you can see here that um, what this is saying is is that 96 percent um, of L&D leaders uh, want to measure the business impact want to use learning learning analytics and what was interesting from uh, the 2017 to 2018 result was that 70% um, of the respondees were uh, putting this at a level five, i.e. The, the highest level response they could give, uh, i.e. strongly agreeing that they wanted to use learning, learning analytics. So the desire is, is really is there to, to do this. Um, and we see that, we see that increasing. Okay, on the downside in terms of, of, of what we looked at, um, the question was, what's the biggest challenge? And as you can see there, it's fairly evenly spread across the too hard, the cost, the no demand, I don't know how to start, um, no access to the data, other reasons. But actually the biggest single reason is about competing priorities. And as, as I think we all know, the pressure on L&D is very often about moving on to the next project rather than analyzing what's gone before. But of course, what we also all know instinctively is, is that if we could actually get extract really great uh, learning and data from what we've done in order to modify what we do in the future, uh, then we could actually really start to build a useful picture of what to do next. And, and, and that, is, that is what we're moving on to next. And so the question is, how do you do that? And the answer is, uh, from uh, my final point is, is to say that it's very important to set a strategy in this area because um, when you're uh, looking at um, uh, this subject of measuring business impact of learning, you actually do need, you know, L&D really needs the involvement of the operating business and that therefore any strategy needs to involve them in the process of creating it. But at that point, once you've actually got a, a strategy set, which can be very high level, uh, then actually it's just a question of starting and of getting on with it and of doing practical things. And I think sometimes, and, and, and what the results show from the survey, people just don't know where to start. It's all a bit daunting. There are too many moving parts, but actually there is a process that you can step through and there are very practical and able people around who can support you in that process. And so that is my point at which I would introduce Andrew, who is a world expert in helping you in that process. Andrew. Thanks, Piers. So yeah, we've heard that the, there is this executive pressure, there is this desire to measure impact of learning, and we want to get into the, the practicalities. Um, so the first thing I would say is that it's important that you're asking the right question. So sometimes I hear people talking about learning evaluation or learning analytics, and they're asking the question, has the learning had any impact on the business? Um, and really, that's, that's a very vague question. Has it had any impact at all? And it's very difficult to get your head around that, very difficult to get a handle on that question. Um, a better question is, has the learning had the impact on the business that it was designed to have? 
And in that way, it's much easier to get a handle on that if you can think about, okay, the learning, whether that's an individual course, whether that's a training program, whatever uh, shape that takes, what impact was it designed to have and did it have that impact? Now, obviously, to do this, uh, the learning does need to have been designed with the business impact in mind. It can't just be training for training's sake or just to raise awareness. Um, you know, if your training hasn't been designed with a particular goal in mind, then you don't really need to do learning analytics to see whether or not it met the goal that it never aimed for in the first place. It probably didn't. Um, so in order to measure the business impact of learning, you need to begin starting to think about measurement as part of the learning design. It can't just be uh, an afterthought. Um, so one way of looking at it is that when you're designing learning, if you start with a business goal in mind, so you've got a particular, maybe there's a KPI that you particularly want to drive, or there's a particular business goal, identify that business goal. And don't identify 20 business goals. Uh, identify you know, a, one or a very small number of business goals that your learning is, is designed to tackle. Um, and having identified that goal, you can then think about, well, how are we actually going to achieve that goal in the business? What do our people need to do? What do they need to do better? What do they need to do differently? What are the actions that we need to take as an organization and the individual people in our organization need to do? And obviously involve your subject matter experts in identifying those things because they're the ones that, that know. Um, once you've identified what people need to do, well, what do they need to learn in order to do those things? What skills do they need to improve? What knowledge do they need to gain? And then what training is required in order for them to learn those things um, and build those skills? I think you can very clearly see from the bottom half of this slide that if you design your learning in that way, it then becomes very straightforward to identify what are the things that you should be measuring. Um, because each of those steps of the logic going from the training to the business goal have very clear KPIs that, that you can measure relating to those individual steps. Um, and if you can collect data on all those things, you can see actually is the training having an impact on the business goal? And if it isn't, where is it going wrong? It may be that people are learning the things that the learning was designed to teach them, um, but they're not actually applying it in their job. Or maybe they are doing the things that you, you thought would drive that business goal, but actually you identified the wrong actions. So by collecting data at all those levels, you can tell the whole story. Um, so once you've uh, straightened out your learning design and you, you're designing learning in a way that's ripe for um, measuring the business impact, you can then start thinking about learning analytics. And if you've attended a watershed webinar before, you might have seen this diagram. Um, this is a model that Mike Rustasi, our CEO, came up with to help us think about the different categories and levels of learning analytics. So you can see that the three sort of spokes of the triangle, um, there are different categories that we can look at learning analytics from. We can look at it from the perspective of the learning experience itself, maybe looking at individual courses or videos or whatever the learning experience is, or we can look at individual learners or groups of learners and look at it from the perspective of the learner. Or thirdly, we can bring those two things together and look at for a particular group of learners and a particular collection of learning experiences, what's happening there and exploring the data from a learning program perspective. Um, and there are, there's good things about doing each of those. We're not saying that one is better than the other. They're just different perspectives, different ways of getting at learning analytics. At the same time, um, you can look at it at the different levels. So it could just be basic measurement of what's happening right up to the predictive and prescriptive analytics right at the top of the diagram as well. Um, and you can also see this as a maturity model. Um, and we encourage people actually to start at the center of this diagram and pick one of these categories, start with a measurement level um, and, and just get started there and then build on that. And when you build on it, maybe you're adding measurement in another category, or maybe you're moving outwards in the triangle um, up to the, the, the more complex types of analytics. Um, so let's have a look at this in a bit more detail and, and how you'd actually go about doing that. Um, so getting started with the different categories, well, that's very simple. It's a case of picking a category, 
and then picking something within that category that you can start with. And we'll be hearing about a couple of case studies of starting small, which, which works really well. We'll hear about those later on in the webinar. Um, so a learning experience, just you know, pick a particular course that you want to look at or pick a particular group of learners that you could look at or a particular learning program. So just start with, with one of those things. And do try to make your life easy. So don't pick something that's going to be really difficult to get the data. Instead, pick something where it's going to be easy to get the data. So maybe that's an XAPI-enabled e-learning course. That might be something that would be really easy to get the data out of, and it's a really good place to start to have a go at starting this learning analytics and, and measuring the, the impact of learning. Um, looking at it from a, a complexity perspective, um, this slide just sets out some of the questions that you'd ask as you're moving from measurement right up to predictive and prescriptive analytics. Um, as you're looking at these, I won't read this slide out to you because I'm sure you can all read yourself. So ha have a read of that slide. Um, but as you're reading that, you'll notice how they build on one another. Um, so you can't just dive straight into the predictive and prescriptive. You do have to start with a measurement and you do have to move through these particular levels. So I'll just give you a moment just to, to read those, those questions if you've not read them, read them so far. Great. And also bear in mind that each of these questions could be something uh, that might be answered automatically by analytics software. So even up to the level of predictive and prescriptive, you might have some software that is automatically re recommending content to learners. So it could be completely automated. But it could also be that there's a mixture um, where some of the levels are you know, automated uh, collection of data and presenting that data back to you. And then there's maybe a more manual process to explore some of the, the higher levels. For example, your analytics software might be used to tell you uh, what people are doing now and how that compares to benchmarks or previous performance. And then you take that data, go and talk to people, go and in investigate in a more qualitative approach and do the advanced evaluation and the predictive and prescriptive pieces in, in that way as well. So there's, there's different ways of doing that. Again, just to give you an, an example of complexity, uh, moving up through the, the levels, uh, this is an example of looking at data about videos. Um, and you can imagine in, in the scenario envisaged here that you might be collecting data about how long videos are, the number of times each video is watched, the number of times it's completed, uh, and the point at which people are dropping off watching the video. So at the measurement level, um, we're, look, we're looking at what are people doing, and we're seeing that people are watching an average of you know, about 3,000 videos, shorter than three minutes each month. Well, that's great to see, but is that good or bad? Well, we could then see that actually videos under three minutes are seeing 50% more views than videos longer than three minutes. So actually, yes, it is good, because it's better than these other videos that are longer. Um, then we might move on to advanced evaluation, start looking at why that is. And we might think that, OK, well, the, the videos that are three, three minutes longer are just too long. And we can see in our other data that we've got that people are dropping out before we're completing. And also that for the, the longer videos, people are less likely to start in the first place. People aren't starting to watch those videos. And then having determined all that from the data, you can start asking, well, what would happen if maybe we should reduce the length of all our videos to be under three minutes? And then we think we can increase completion rates by 50%. Um, and then you could go and do that and actually collect data about whether or not you're right and did reducing the length of the videos uh, actually improve completion rates. So that's just an example of how that might work in, in you know, just one small area of looking at videos. Um, so once you've de designed your learning, thinking about what you're going to measure, and you've thought about your, the learning analytics maturity model, you've thought about what you want to look at, so you've got an idea of, of, of where you want to start, um, the next thing to do is actually define your project. And I've, I've shamelessly borrowed these from uh, Leo's uh, report into measuring the business impact of learning, which we'll um, share where you can find that at, at the end of this, this webinar. Um, so the four um, different questions that you can ask in defining your project are obviously what, why, how, and who. So let's, let's look at those in detail. So the what, uh, what data are you going to collect? 
what systems are involved, what's the context of the, the project, what's the story behind it, what are you actually doing, um, the why, what are the objectives of your learning analytics project, what are you hoping to get out of it. And it's important to note here that the objectives of your learning analytics project will be different from the objectives of the learning itself. So the learning might be to drive a particular business KPI to see a particular improvement in performance. Um, the learning analytics project, your objectives might be things like, um, you know, if it's your first learning analytics project, it might be just understanding how learning analytics might work in your organization. Or the objective might be um, something like understanding um, what which types of videos make the best videos so that you can then use that data to improve your videos in future going back to that video example so that's the why uh, the how is just making a plan how are you actually going to do this and then the who is, is really important thinking about who's involved in this project and that might be stakeholders who are going to be interested in the data and interested in seeing reports and you want to know well what sort of requirements in terms of reporting do those stakeholders have um, but also, who is going to be vital to the, the success of the project? Who controls the data that you need? And who are you going to need to, to involve to, to make that project work? So that's, that's defining the project. Um, so finally, once you've defined your project, you need to actually do it. And we've defined uh, five steps plus one bonus step, ends up being six. Uh, five steps to take you through your learning analytics project. I won't go in, into a vast amount of detail on these today, but we do have a white paper that does go into tons of detail and explains each of these steps uh, step by step. Um, and there's also a bunch of other resources that we will be talking about at the end of this webinar. Um, so the first step, gather the data, get all the data together, make sure you've got access to the data, bring that into your learning record store. Step two, Get to know your data, check the data, make sure that if there's, there's any errors in the data, you can get those addressed, get the data looking good. Operationalize your data, get things automated, get the data flowing in automatically, uh, start monitoring things, start to make use of the data. Um, number four, explore the data. So start actually um, investigating, looking at things in more detail, asking extra questions, um, sharing it with, with more people potentially. And then number five, experimenting. So this is where you've explored the data, you've come up with an idea, okay, let's shorten our videos down to under three minutes. Uh, and then you try that as an experiment, actually do these shorter videos perform better um, and then collect the data there. And the bonus step, step, step six, which you can really be doing pretty much the whole time, is showing off your data, sharing it with other people um, and making an impact in, in your business with that data. Um, so now you've got an idea of how to get started. Um, it's time to sort of move on to your, your next request, which was getting inspired, the case studies. And actually on the poll today, most of you selected case studies as the thing that you thought most people would be interested in. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're just going to share a taster of five different case studies, a very, very quick overview. And then the next five webinars, it's not going to be me talking, it's not going to be Piers talking. It's going to be the actual people at the companies that are doing this stuff with XAPI, measuring the business impact of learning. They're going to be telling their own stories and talking you through these. Um, so every week for the next four weeks, we've got a webinar. Uh, if you haven't registered for those yet, definitely register for those, and we'll be sharing the links at the end of this webinar. Um, so here's, here's the summary. So um, the, our, our second webinar, the first case study, is, is going to be Bear. Uh, Bear Paints, and they're going to be talking about how they're actually getting data out of the learning record store and using it in, in other systems. The misconception we're tackling here is that XAPI isn't good for reporting outside the LRS, but actually, Bear is using XAPI to feed data into other applications that are then powering their sales training and performance support. So they have a mobile application that presents content to their learners and one way that they're using the data inside that app is that the app has a, a list of the top 10 most popular con pieces of content. So it's encouraging other learners saying, this is what other people have found useful. Why don't you have a look at this content? 
Um, and that data is powered from data that's coming um, out from Watershed. Uh, it's XAPI data processed in Watershed. So that's what we're going to be covering in our second webinar. Um, the next webinar, Kat are going to be speaking to us about their modern ecosystem. The misconception that Kat will be tackling is that large organizations can't migrate formal programs to new ecosystems. But the reality is that Caterpillar is building a modern learning ecosystem using XAPI to train, retrain, and develop the future workforce. Now, a lot of people, I know some of you on the, the webinar got very excited when we shared our case study of a Visa's learning ecosystem. I should say Visa's case study, not our case study. Um, well, CAT is also building a learning ecosystem, and they're going to tell you all about it on the second case study, third webinar. Uh, next up, we have Verizon. Um, they're going to be talking about starting small and then scaling. So the misconception there is that to be successful with XAPI, you have to eat the elephant all at once. Well, there's a lot of elephant. And we've been talking about starting small on this webinar, just starting at the center of that triangle, starting small, pick one program. And that is exactly what Verizon did. The reality is Verizon used a proof of concept as the foundation of a broader XAPI ecosystem. So they just started with a single XAPI enabled e-learning course. That was their starting point, closely followed by a second e-learning course. And then off the back of that, they've now got several different teams involved running different XAPI projects, using the lessons they learned from that proof of concept to then uh, implement all kinds of different things in that broader ecosystem. So that's what they will be talking about in the fourth webinar. Um, Quicken Loans, another great example of uh, starting small and just do it already. So the misconception is it's hard to get started with XAPI, but the reality is that Quicken Loans, they decide just to jump in and start trying things. Um, they're relatively early on in their journey with XAPI compared to some of the other ones that we'll be talking about, um, but still, still doing great things. And they're gonna be talking about their experience of diving in and, and getting started. And finally, um, PwC are gonna be talking about volume and privacy. So a misconception um, that you might have is that XAPI poses hosting data limits that just aren't suited for very high volumes of data. Well, actually, in reality, PwC is using XAPI today with hundreds of thousands of users globally uh, in an ecosystem that involves multiple LRSs. We're really excited that PwC have agreed to speak on, on our sixth webinar. Um, they're a very large, complex, global organization, and they're doing some very interesting things in Watershed. I won't steal their thunder, uh, but they are doing some very interesting things. So maximum hype for that one. Make sure you register for, for all the webinars and come along. Um, so you can sign up to attend these Practitioner Spotlight broad broadcasts and also get access to various tools that I've mentioned and many tools that I haven't mentioned yet uh, with more resources, more tools being added to uh, the Zappy April website every week. Bit of a tongue twister there. XAPI, XAPRIL, Zappy April. Um, more resources and tools are going to be added to that website every week. Regardless of where you are on your journey, you're going to find useful resources that are relevant for your particular level. So make sure you, you get onto that website and have a look. The link will be on, on the final slide. Uh, these are just some of the resources that are on the website. So we've got XAPI Explained, um, which is sort of part one, introducing you to XAPI, and then part two, XAPI Implementation, which is our more technical guide to implementing XAPI with our distilled wisdom over the, the last five years, or in fact, longer than five years before XAPI even went live. We've been working with XAPI, gathering the, the, this wisdom and, and best practices, and that's all packed into that XAPI implementation guide. Um, Watershed Essentials LRS, you can get a free LRS to get started right away. You don't even have to have a budget you can start tracking to a learning record store today. Um, we've got a guide to ex getting executive buy-in like a boss. Um, so if you need to get buy-in from your organization, check out that guide. Seven steps to evaluate your learning, which takes you through a seven-step process to evaluate a particular learning program. We've got the Leo Insight into how to define your business impact measurement strategy. Um, that's the guide that I, I stole the, the, the questions, how, what, why questions from 
Uh, and there's, there's loads, loads more insight in there that you should definitely have a look at. Um, the five steps to start using learning analytics. That's the guide that I mentioned. Very briefly, we looked at the five steps. They're all outlined in much more detail there. Uh, and much, much more. There's you know handouts that, that are very quick to look at, all the way to full eBooks, which you know you can spend an evening reading and getting some deep insights from. So check out those resources. All of those resources are on zappiesapril.com. So please ha have a look to that. Um, and please, if you've got any additional questions, please uh, add them in the questions panel now. We're coming to the end of uh, the, the talking bit of the webinar, but I think we will have, uh, maybe we'll have time for a couple of questions um, and we'll certainly follow up with questions in the, uh, the Q&A document, which we will send out afterwards. So actually looking at the time, I think we are out of time for questions, um, but keep posting your questions in before you leave today. Uh, and we will follow up with that Q&A document. Thanks so much for attending this, this webinar. Please do attend the other webinars. Uh, it's just been me and Piers today, which, which has been great. I think you'll agree. Um, but we've got people in real organizations doing real stuff in the, the following week. So it's going to be even better. So do sign up for those and do make sure you attend. Thanks for joining. Thank you.